God is my helper. The Lord upholds my life. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the worship of God for College Hill Presbyterian Church on this first Sunday of fall. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you are new or newer, and I know some of you are, we want you in the loop with all of the programs, events, and activities in the life of this church, all the ways we seek to grow together in love. We summarize all of that in the E Chronicle, which you can subscribe to by sending an email to me, pastor at collegehillpc.org, and I will make sure that you are invited to all of these great opportunities for us to grow together in love. From that E Chronicle, you would learn about things like the adult dinner group, which resumes today at Casa Italia, and the numbers are looking fantastic, and Jean Ann, we are so excited. Thank you for your work on that. There's a bunch of stuff upcoming. I wanna first invite Lauren Jujan to come up here and share a little. <laughs> Hi everybody, um, this is just a quick announcement about the church picnic that is happening October 6th, um, right after service, and if everybody could please bring a dish to share, that would be great. And a special welcome to any Lafayette College students that are here. Um, you are welcome to the picnic, and we're actually going to have some tables set aside specifically for you. Um, so welcome. Thank you. Just a couple of quick notes about the next two weeks. Sunday the 29th is Porch Fest here on College Hill. We will be present, we will have a presence. So if you're out and about enjoying Porch Fest, be sure to swing by. There'll also be a Satori concert happening here in this room at that time. So be aware of that. And then uh, the church picnic, also fish and chips, youth group returns on October 6th. The front porch, our casual, conversational, child-friendly, nine o'clock new worship experience here in the sanctuary, that will be on Sunday, October 6th. Very full day. So it would be really easy to pat ourselves on the back because we are so busy, but, it's activity with a purpose. We're here to grow together in love. Um, I want to point out to you that these beautiful flowers behind me uh, are given, let me, I'm actually going to do that so you can see them, uh, are given in loving memory of Lynn Steckley by Kurt and Kim Steckley Fordham. They are beautiful. We are grateful uh, for that enrichment of our space. We're here to grow in love and to be together in the presence of God. So give yourself permission to be here now as we move more deeply into worship.
If you're worshiping online, you'll find the entire order of service on our website. Here in the room, you received a bulletin on your way in, and on the front of it, you'll find our responsive call to worship. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we read these words. Happy is the one who does not follow the advice of the wicked or sit in the seat of scoffers. They are like trees planted by streams of water. God watches over the way of the righteous. Come, let us worship God. Let us pray. Spirit of God, you are sweeping through this place as wind and fire and life. Open our hearts to receive the fresh winds of your spirit 
And with that wind at our backs to bear your love out into our hurting world, Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. Through Christ we pray. Amen. We have a way of ducking and hiding out and laying low when the wind of the Spirit is at work. But this is our opportunity to realize that and get back in line with the life God dreams for us. I invite you to join me in our prayer of confession. We are restless, O oh God, and we wander from your ways. Forgive us for forgetting you. Forgive us for neglecting our neighbor. Forgive us for straying from the path. Let your love free us to find a home in you and here with each other. Hear us now as we confess in the silence of our hearts. to condemn us? Only Christ. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power over us. Christ prays for us. He himself bore all our sin in his body on the cross so that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is new. Let us believe the good news of the gospel. In Christ we are forgiven and free. Thanks be to our God. Amen. of Christ be with you all. Let us greet one another with signs of God's peace. the children to come join me here on the chancel steps. May have to uh, some of you on the floor. It's okay. How is everybody doing today? 
All right. I think you meant it when you said that. I'm so glad you're here, and I would like to ask a question. You all see this green thing that I wear around my neck? Have you seen this? This is called a stole. A stole. I wear this about half the year, this green one. And in addition to some designs, what do you see on this stole? Yeah. It says welcome in a ton of different languages. It says welcome in many different languages. Now, why do you think I have the word welcome on my stole? Why would I wear that? Lloyd? So that people can feel like welcome to the church. Like, like everyone's welcome to the church. Yeah. We think it's really important that church be a place where everybody is welcome. People we know and people we don't. People who are dressed up in fancy clothes and people who are not. All kinds of people, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. But there's also one really important group of people that we want to welcome at church. Can you guess who? Got some guesses, yeah? You. Me? Oh, that's, that's kind of you, not what I was looking for, but thank you. Who else? The college people. The college people, I like that one. And we do welcome the college people. Yeah, I mean. High school students are important. We're getting warmer, actually. College students, high school students. Here, Lloyd? Graduates. Graduates are important. <laughs> Middle school. Middle school. <laughs> and you. You. So we're going to hear, yeah, right. Uh, God. Well, God, has, you know what? Yes, and the way we do that is by welcoming you. So we're going to hear a story from the Bible today about a time when Jesus' disciples were arguing with each other about which one of them was the most important and which one got to be first. Do you think Jesus liked it that they were arguing about who got to be first? No, he did not. And you know what he told them? He took a child, he took a child and put the child in the center of the group and said, whoever welcomes a child in my name welcomes me. So we think about all the people that we wanna welcome, I actually think you are really important. And I was wondering, can you, can you help me with something today? I want to remind these people of that. So here's what we're going to do. I invite you all to stand up. You're going to follow me until I say stop. Okay, we're going to walk this way. Walk this way. Walk this way. Keep walking. Okay, I'm going to stop here, but you all keep coming. All Make sure you're in the aisle. Great. Congregation. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and face the center aisle. Kids, I invite you to look around at all of these people. Jesus said, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Normally we do a repeat after me prayer where we have the kids do it, but this morning is different. I want the adults to repeat after me. And adults, the first thing I want you to do is to stretch forth your hand in blessing, like this. And then adults, repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for these children. For these children. Help, us Help us to welcome them, to welcome them. and love them and give you thanks for them. Give you thanks for them. 
in Jesus name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Congregation, you can be seated. Kids, we've got the nursery and jam and roots today. If you don't know where you're going, find the adult who brought you to church and they will get you pointed in the right direction. Right. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading from the Bible today is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 11, verses 18 to 20. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds, but I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. And I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, you let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the 12 and said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Here ends this reading of scripture. May God help us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let us pray. Let the good news come now, O oh God, not only in word, but in power, with the Holy Spirit, and full assurance. Through Christ we pray. Amen. They did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask. Well, that feels familiar. I think I would have fit in with those first disciples just fine. I cannot preach like Peter, I cannot pray like Paul, but I cannot get it, and I can be afraid to ask with the best of them. I do that all the time. If aspects of this passage feel familiar, good. That means you're paying attention. Last week, we heard the first passion prediction in Mark. For the very first time, Jesus told his closest friends where all of this is headed, how all of this will end, and they did not want to hear it. Last week was Mark's first passion prediction. 
This morning, we skip over some material to arrive at Mark's second passion prediction. Once again, he's trying to tell them where all of this is headed, how all of this will end. But they are, if anything, even more confused than before. So Jesus tries to tell them exactly what he wants and exactly what this means. It's about finding their center. Finding their center. They're on the road again, passing through Galilee, but keeping a low profile because Jesus wants to teach them in detail, in depth, about the suffering and death and new life that await them. But they don't get it. And they are afraid to admit they don't get it. And so it just seems like they are stuck. They arrive at Capernaum, and once they are inside the house, Jesus says, hey, what are you guys arguing about on the way? Silence. Heavy, guilty silence. It's like that moment in a meeting when you ask for a volunteer. Suddenly everybody clams up and all eyes on the floor. Nobody wants to speak. Because on the way, even as Jesus was trying to tell them about his suffering and death, they were arguing about that age-old theological question. Who do they Who's the greatest? Who's number one? That's what they argued about on the way. Jesus sighs, rolls his eyes, sits down, which is what rabbis do when they're ready to teach. He takes a child. And places the child in the center of the gathering. Mark says <clears throat> Jesus places it in the center of the gathering. Did you notice that? It? It. That little word is really significant here. See, most biblical scholars believe that the first century followers of Jesus would not in fact be familiar with the music of Ms. Whitney Houston. They do not believe the children are our future. <laughs> the disciples are in fact hardcore, straight up, unreconstructed male chauvinists who believe that children are snotty, germ-infested, sub-human nuisances. Women's work. Things, and I use that word deliberately, things beneath the notice and the dignity of big, important men like that. But Jesus takes the child places the child in the center of the group, takes the child in his arms and says, whoever welcomes one such as this, welcomes me. Now they should get it. Now they can know. It's about finding your center. I have spent my whole life in church, in churches, 
big churches and small churches, evangelical churches and mainline Protestant churches, frozen chosen Presbyterian churches and tongue-talking, holy rolling Pentecostal churches. I have been in more than my fair share of churches and every one of them, every single one without a single exception would want to describe itself as a Christ-centered community. What is this church? We are a Christ-centered community. I have earned that shibboleth my whole life. And friends, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means, and at this point, I am afraid I know what it means to be part of a community that centers on someone else. That part I get. I currently belong to a Calvin-centered community. <laughs> Four other people in the family, but so much of what mom and dad and big brother and big sister decide and do depends on the passing whims and weird quirks of one almost four-year-old boy. I don't need to make chicken nuggets ever again. I don't like Paw Patrol and don't enjoy watching it. I desperately want to read something, anything other than The Three Little Pigs. But, I belong to a Calvin-centered community. So I get that, but if you're gonna be a Christ-centered community, there's a really obvious problem with that. Jesus isn't here. It's not like he's gonna take a spot in a pew and just tell me which hymns we should sing or which people we should help, or what we should do about the parking around here. Jesus isn't here. How do you center a community on someone who's absent? Jesus takes the child places the child in their midst, embraces the child and tells them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And now we can get it. And now we can know. Jesus appoints a proxy. That's where we can find our center. By the grace of God, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, I believe we are building something here at College Hill Presbyterian Church, a home place where you can be rooted and grounded, where you can grow and flourish, where we extend welcome to all, where we look after one another's needs, where we inquire about the well-being of our neighbors and try to do something about it. I believe we are building a home, and I believe that home can be centered on Christ. It begins when we welcome the children, which is not the same thing as having a bunch of children. We have a bunch of children at College Hill Presbyterian Church. I hope you know that. I hope you don't take that for 
See, if you don't get out much, if this church is where you get most of your church, you may not realize how unusual this is. Churches like ours, historic churches, established churches, mainline Protestant churches, churches like ours do not have kids. But we do. We have so many kids in the life of this church. Please don't take that for granted. We are in the middle of a miracle right now. How do miracles happen? I like the old Russian proverb that says, pray to God, but row for sure. How do miracles happen? We are blessed with these kids because God is good. And we are blessed with these kids because we work every single day to deserve their presence in our midst. I'm talking about the incredible giftedness and untold hours put in by Lauren Jujan and Emily Swain. I'm talking about the deep dedication of so many faith formation volunteers who make our programs possible. I'm talking about the rich legacy of the College Hill Presbyterian Church Nursery School and the director and the teachers and the committee who keep that work going. I'm talking about elders and deacons and trustees who oversee the life of this church and make sure we have what we need to love these children well i'm talking about you all of you who see it and support it sometimes sacrificially with your time and your talent and your treasure thanks to all of that we are in the middle of a miracle. Don't you dare take it for granted. Thank God. Thank you. Amen. But having children is not the same thing as welcoming children. Now that they're here, what will we do with them? What would it mean to center the life of a church on the welcome of children? Not just tolerating them, not just trotting them out from time to time, not expecting them to be seen but not heard, but welcoming the noise, the mess, the sacred and life-giving chaos, promising to love them no matter what and then never, ever ever taking it back. What would that be like? A church that can do that, a church that can truly welcome children, is a church that can welcome anyone. A church with Christ at its center. Don't you want to be part of a church like that? Come home to College Hill Presbyterian Church.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God invites us to get our, over ourselves and center our lives on those who need care. As a way to be part of God's work in shaping the community, we get to share what we have this morning for us.
Please be seated. We get to pray together to center those who are in need among us and those we know about, whether you're here in person or online, placing your prayer request in the chat in the room, raising your hand. After each request, I will say, God in your mercy, and you are invited to respond here, our prayer. I have a couple of things to get us started. <laughs> First of all, uh, what a gift to have Pam's music. Thank you so much. And for the great gift to have the choir back and the, the great gift of their music under Tom's direction, God, we thank you that we can, through music, pray twice. May you continue in our music to be glorified. Thank you for the gifts of many who enrich our life. God, in your mercy. Our friend Shirley Morgenstern is not here this morning uh, because she has been hospitalized in Vertigo. So I don't know anything more than that because I learned this early this morning. Um, but we certainly want to keep Shirley in prayer. God, we ask your comfort. We ask your peace. We ask for swift resolution and full healing. Be near to her, we pray. God, in your mercy. Amen. And someone else who's not in the room and who we won't be seeing as much for the next several weeks, uh, Chris Hegel is having full hip replacement soon. And uh, he gave me permission to tell that to all of you and to invite your prayers. God, we pray a successful procedure and a swift recovery for Chris. God, in your mercy. In chat, Kathy Mendler asks prayers for Christopher having a medical test tomorrow, praying he gets a good diagnosis. God, we pray for Christopher that you would calm nerves, that you would grant peace, that you would accompany Christopher on the journey into healing and wholeness. God, in your mercy. People of God, for what else do we pray today? Let me bring you the microphone. Um, so I have a friend back in high school in my hometown. There's just been like a lot of tragedy recently in Emily, and I um, learned yesterday that she was recently like, injured badly on top of that. So it's praying for her physical healing and just you know, the relationships that have been going on in her life right now. God, we join in prayers both for healing and for hopes for reconciliation, for relationships mended and made strong by your love. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh, here I come. Uh, for Kim and Jim, Jim's going through some major health issues that came on suddenly and are very serious. So just to keep them in your prayers. Yes. God, we ask for your nearness, for the assurance that nothing can separate from your love, for all to be made well and a sustaining presence in the meantime. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh. Prayers for a friend, John, that is battling with cancer, and for another friend, Grace, that um, was it true because of the cancer diagnosis. God, we pray for both of them, lifting them into the light of your love and healing and help. God, in your mercy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Our granddaughter Kate was turning 16 today. I asked that everybody remember that there are young people on the road to drive safely. <laughs> God, we thank you for Kate turning 16 and for the gift that Kate is to those who love her. Uh, we pray safety and care for all on the road. God, in your mercy. This is kind of a blessing mixed with anxiety for some of them. Um, for all the fourth year medical students, of which my daughter is one, who have to turn in their 25 to 30 residency applications by Wednesday. Lots of tears, lots of anxiety, lots of late nights for all of them, but what a blessing to have gotten to this point. So prayers that they can survive the next three days without a full breakdown that I have to hear on the phone. <laughs> God, we would rejoice with those who rejoice and be near to those who are anxious and have solidarity with those who are both at the same time. May you be a rock and a refuge and one who brings them through. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Dave, I'm going to... Prayer of joy that our uh, youngest daughter is expecting. God, thank you for the promise of life. May joy be multiplied. God, in your mercy. We'll continue together into the prayer that Jesus taught. We're invited to join in when we get to that point using debts and debtors. The words are in your bulletin. God. How often we don't understand what you want from us. Thank you for making it simple. Not easy, but simple. Love you, love neighbor, welcome children, welcome the stranger. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with you. By your spirit, May this be a place where we help each other do all of those things. May our life bear witness to what you want for this broken world. God, we're so mindful of places where death and suffering and war run amok. Israel, and Lebanon, and Gaza, Russia, and Ukraine. Other places far from the headlines held in your broken heart. Speed, justice, and peace, we pray. May we bear witness here to the better things you want for our nation. In these difficult days, in these anxious weeks, as we hate and fear one another, And so many blaspheme your image because it is born by the stranger. Stir up in us a commitment to care for others in our community, to seek the common good to resist the temptation to have contempt, to resist the temptation to have contempt for those who disagree with us. Make a home here 
for all who want better things. We are not wise to understand it all. We are not strong to accomplish it all. But we are your people. We claim your promise never to leave us alone. Praying together in the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.